Hello and welcome to this installment of the Cisco Ironport Video Knowledge Base series. In this video I'll cover creating an LDAP debug log as well as some of the basic uses for this log. The LDAP debug logs can be a powerful asset when you're trying to diagnose an LDAP issue with your Ironport appliance. If you utilize LDAP in your environment, it's strongly recommended that you enable these logs so that you have a diagnostic resource in the event that you encounter a problem. The LDAP debug logs function similar to other logs on your Ironport appliance in that they can be configured to roll over at preset intervals. The logs can also be parsed locally on the appliance from the CLI using the tail or grep command. The logs can also be retrieved from the appliance using FTP just like any of your other logs. The LDAP debug logs can be created and maintained in the GUI or the CLI, but they can only be parsed via the CLI or on a remote system after you transfer the files. Now that we've covered a little bit about what these logs are, let's start by creating an LDAP debug log from the GUI. First, click on the System Administration tab at the top of your screen and then select Log Subscription. Here you'll see a list of logs that are already configured. Next click on Add Log Subscription. For the log type, select LDAP Debug Logs. Next we'll need to give the log a name. This is really not critical, but it needs to be something you can keep track of and it can't contain any special characters or spaces. For the remaining options we can choose the defaults. Once you've made all your selections, click on Submit and then Commit Changes. Now that we've created an LDAP Debug Log via the GUI, I'll show you how to create one via the CLI. So if you log into your CLI, you need to simply issue the command log config. Once you enter log config, you'll see a list of options here. We want to choose new, so we'll enter new and press return. This will produce a list of currently available log types. We want to choose the number that corresponds with LDAP debug logs. Now in your system, the number may be different, simply because you may have different logs configured. So now we need to give the log an, a name. Again, this can be anything you want, just can't contain any special characters or spaces. Once you've entered into your data here, you can hit return a couple of times to get back to the prompt. And then we'll enter commit to save the changes. Now your log is created. So now that we have our log created, we can either use the grep command to search for something specific within the log, or we can use the tail command to watch the log in real time. So this is very helpful if you're trying to diagnose an issue with your LDAP server and your Ironport appliance. So now that we've got the log created, what types of information can we see within the log? Well, normally you'll see standard communications between your Ironport appliance and the LDAP server. Now, depending on your environment, the volume of traffic, and the number of queries taking place, you may see a lot of traffic here, or you may see very little. Some of the more common error messages that you may see that customers tend to call about are connection interrupted reader, writer. Um, this error is not typically indicative of a major problem on your appliance. However, if you're seeing a lot of these errors, it may be worth investigating further. One thing to keep in mind with LDAP is that the default settings for cache TTL are 900 seconds. So you may see several entries in the logs that indicate resolved by cache hit. This is totally normal and you should expect to see a fair number of these in a busy environment. Another error that you may encounter is LDAP server unreachable. Now you can actually test the connectivity from the Ironport appliance to the LDAP server using the telnet command by telnetting on the specified port whether it be 3268 or 389 or another port. Another error that you may see is failure to follow continuation. This error typically occurs when the Ironport appliance contacts an LDAP server that doesn't have the data that we've asked for and that LDAP server refers us to another LDAP server that we can't contact directly. Common problems associated with this error are failure to resolve the host or failure to connect to the host. Again, you can use the telnet command to try to diagnose the issues with that LDAP server. As you can see, the LDAP debug logs are a powerful resource, and if you're utilizing LDAP in your environment, it's strongly recommended to enable these logs. You can find additional information about the LDAP debug logs and other log configurations by going to Help in the upper right-hand corner of the GUI, then select Online Help, and search for LDAP debug log. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.